Congratulations on deciding to earn your GED high set or task test. I'm so excited for you. In today's video here, we are going to do some math problems, 10 practice problems that will really help you as you're working on the math portion of your test. Now, the best way to consume this video is definitely to watch the video in the entirety and to do the math problems with me. Don't just watch actually do the problems with me. Pause the video if you need to. And if you're new here, welcome. Definitely click that subscribe button. Let's get started on these problems. The test that we are going over here is a high set free practice test, but it's very similar to the GED or the task. Now, the first thing you want to really make sure that you are familiar with the formula sheet. This is the formula sheet for the high set test. And notice here it has perimeter, circumference, area, volume, length, capacity, volume, and weight. So it honestly has quite a bit here on this. So definitely make sure that you're familiar with whatever formula sheet you're going to be using. Okay, for our first question, consider the following advertisement. So sale of iris bulbs. So the first half a dozen is $5. So first half dozen, $5. Second is $4 per bulb. And then each extra is three per bulb. So let's take a look at this. Which of the following calculations represents the cost of two dozen iris bulbs? So we're looking for two dozen. And we know that two dozen is actually equal to 24, right? Because one dozen is 12 and two times 12 is 24. So we have 24 bulbs total. So let's look at this. It says the first half a dozen. So if one dozen equals 12, then I know that half a dozen is actually equal to six, right? Okay, so the first half a dozen is $5 per bulb. So the first six is going to be $5. So we have six times five, right? Because it's $5 per bulb. And I'm gonna put these here in, uh, in parentheses. Then the second half a dozen, so the second six is going to be $4 per bulb. All right? And then we add one more, each additional bulb. So, so far we have six and six is 12. So we have one dozen. So we have 12 left, right? So we have 12 left times that by three. And when I'm doing a, an equation like this, I just like to see, you know, do it and then look and oh my goodness, looks like C is the answer. Is that what you want? Computer salespeople at a local store earn $100 commission for the first 500 computers they sell each month. For each additional computer they sell during that month, the commission per computer is 1.5 times the rate for the first five. Which of the following is the total commission earned by a salesperson who sells eight computers in a month? Okay, so here we have eight computers. Okay, so for the first five, it says here that he makes $100. So we have five times 100 is 500. Then for the second, for the additional computers, he makes one and a half times. So that is one and a half times 100 is equal to 150, right? So, if he sold eight computers, the first five, so we have eight minus five, and he has three leftovers. So then he has three times 150. Three times 150 is going to be 450. Add those up and we get 950, which the answer is C. At a movie rental machine, the movies rent for $3, except on Tuesday when they rent for 49 cents. Approximately what percent of the regular cost is saved by renting a movie on Tuesday? Okay, so basically we need to take 0.49 
and divide that by three. So I'm going to use my calculator here. This is the TI-30. This is the calculator that is approved for the high set GED or task. Of course, they will provide the calculator for you. So I'm going to take 0.49 divided by three, and I am left with 0.16. Now, we can take 0.16 and we can just move the decimal over twice, doot, doot, and then that would turn it into a percent. So we're at 16%. Look, 16%. But wait, it says how much is saved. Okay, so I have to go 100, 100% because that's how much a movie is on a regular night, minus 16%, which gives us 84%, which is the answer, which is B. So really make sure that when you're answering questions that you look closely, very closely at what they're asking for. The wood floor of a community recreation center is in the shape of a square that is 200 feet by 200 feet. Okay, so we're at a square. We have 200 by 200. If the directions on a bottle of floor wax indicate that half the bottle will cover approximately 2,000 square feet, how many full bottles of floor wax are needed to wax the floor? So what we need to do is we need to find this area. And to find area, area is simply length times width. So our area is equal to 200 times 200. 200 times 200 is 40,000. Okay, so it says here that half a bottle covers 20,000, excuse me, 2,000 square feet. So if half a bottle covers 2,000 square feet, we know that a full bottle, a full bottle covers 4,000 square feet. I wonder why they didn't just say the full bottle. But anyway, a full bottle is 4,000 square feet. And we are taking 40,000 square feet. So we basically need to go 4,000 divided by 40,000. And when I have a lot of zeros that I'm dividing into another lot of zeros, one trick that I do is I just take, oh, here's three zeros, cross those out, and three zeros, cross those out. And it just makes it a lot easier. So I have four divided by 40. How many times is four going to 40? 10. So how many bottles do we need? 10. The answer is B. We're halfway through here, and if you'd like me to do even more videos like this math video going over problems, give this video here a thumbs up. Which line would best fit the data shown in the scatter plot? So basically, a scatter plot is we have all the little dots, and we have to have a line that goes through the middle, through the median. Okay, so here's a line like that. Now notice here with A, uh, the line kind of goes more like that. With B, the line is a little bit too low. We need it to kind of go up a little bit more. C, again, it's kind of a different line there. D seems like a pretty good candidate. E, the line is a little bit too high. It's more like down there. So what is the answer? D. A couch advertised for $500 can be purchased for a down payment of $200 plus five equal monthly installments. What is the amount of each monthly payment? Okay, so we have $500. And then we're going to subtract $200 for the down payment, which leaves us with $300. And there are five equal payments. So basically we just need to go five goes into 300. So five goes into 36 times, which is 30, zero, bring down another zero, five goes into zero, zero times. So the each monthly installment is $60. The answer is D. Which graph could represent the relationship between X and Y if it is known that Y always decreases as X increases? Okay. So here, 
We have our x and we have our y. So y is decreasing as x is increasing. So here's kind of a general line. Let's sort of see what goes with it. All right, so in this first one here, looks like y is increasing and x is also increasing. So this one is definitely not it. Okay, the second one here is, this is called a, a parabola. This is more of a trigonometry. And it looks like sometimes x is going up, x is always going up, but sometimes y is going up and sometimes y is going down. So while x goes up, y goes up or it goes down. God, that's not the answer. Let's look at this one here. So y is, it's going down. I mean, it's going down at two different rates. One rate is going a little bit slower and the other rate's going more exponential. So y is definitely going up. And x is also definitely going up the entire time. So two is one of the answers. And looks like the fourth one here is pretty similar to the picture we just drew. As y goes up, x is also going up. So, looks like we have two and four. So the answer would be E. The function y equals f of x is graphed in the standard xy coordinate plane as shown. Which of the following values is the average rate of change of the function from x equals one to x equals three? So the first thing we have to do is find those plots. Okay. So here we have the y and here is the x. So x is one. So here we have x is one, looks like it's right here. And the coordinate is going to be one, four. So x is one, y is four. Now let's look at where y is at three. So here y is, excuse me, x is three. Looks like it goes down a bit to this point right here. And this point is going to be three, which represents the x, and negative four, which represents the y. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out the rise over the run. Okay, so rise over run. So the rise is going to be how far it goes up and down. So here we're at, we need to find the difference between four and negative four. So there's eight because we go up four and up four more, or I guess you could say down four and down four more because the line is actually going down. So it's negative eight is going to be the rise and the run, it just moves over two, right? Because one to three is two. And Negative eight halves is not one of the answers, so we're going to have to simplify a little bit. And two goes into both of them, right? So uh, two goes into eight four times. Two goes into two once, so we can cross, cross that out, and we have to keep our little negative there. So the answer is A, which is negative four. Okay, down here now, guys. A local newspaper is featuring news about the end of the school year on the front page, including articles on the senior prom, the state champion track team, and the retiring teachers. The following diagram shows the planned layout of the front page. Each layout area is either a rectangle or a combination of rectangles. What percent of the front page is taken by the prom story, including the prom photograph? Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out the area of the entire page and then we have to figure out the area of the prom page, or the prom and the photo, and then just do a little division. So area is equal length times width. So we have four times five. So four times five is equal to 20. And now looks like the prom area and the photo are just a little square right in the middle there. And this is two units, and then this is also two units. So we have two times two, which is equal to four. 
Let me just go, um, how many, four goes into 20? 20 times. So it represents 20%. Another way to think about it is like five, if you want to do mental math, five goes into 20 four times, right? So that would be like 25%. And so this is a little bit less. Uh, it's a nice even 20%. The answer is A. Hey, thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. You are definitely committed by, by watching the, the whole video. And I'm super excited because with a little bit of practice or maybe a lot of practice, you will definitely get this done. I'm super proud of you. And just remember that you are enough and make sure that you believe in yourself. You will achieve this. I believe in you. And have a great day. Bye-bye.